Easy Peasy Friday. We're going to do some rings today from some of the ring shanks, or some people call them ring blanks, that you can find at bsuboutiques.com. They're my very favorites, so the ones that I use. And I'm going to show you how fast and easy it is to make cute rings that sell really well at shows and at fairs and in shops. And ones that you can give away to people for gifts that they're going to really love. It's just for fun. doesn't cost you a whole lot. They can sell for anywhere from $10 to $20 a piece. And you can make a whole bunch of rings in a very short session. As you can see here, I've been making all kinds of rings. I've made rings from antique buttons. Let's see, what else I have here? I have, this is a button too. This is a button in the middle of a filigree. If you can see that, Rob, if you can zero in on it. This is an antique button. This is a piece of damascene iron that I repurposed that was broken, couldn't do anything else with it. Damascene iron is uh, 24 karat gold inlay on iron, and it was real popular back in the 40s and 50s. Um, I also have some very simple rings here. Here's another one with an old button. Some that I just um, put a little flower on. This one is our Chatty Squirrels from the website. That's one of my most favorite findings ever. In fact, I think it's on sale right now. It's made from an illustration from an old children's book. The die is very, very old for that. Um, here's one that I use just a heart finding on a cigar band ring shank that we carry at Bisu Boutiques. And I jazz it up by adding a few Viva flatbacks. That's Czech Preciosa Viva brand. Um, they're a little bit less expensive than Swarovski. They're just one facet less than Swarovski, so they have all the sparkle, and they don't cost as much, so that's nice. And we have a lot of them at Bisa Boutiques for very little money, and they're easy to set with glue. So anyway, I'm going to take you over to the workbench and show you just a few little simple things, and you are going to be off and running making all the rings in the world that you want to make. So guys, I can't stress to you how super simple this is. Basically, all you need is a ring blank. This is the 20s style signet ring blank from Bisu Boutiques that we have in brass socks. Um, this is the cigar band style in the silverware. We have lots of these in stock. This is probably the, the best one. I, I like this one. I go for this one all the time. This one and this one. We're out of stock on this one right now. They're at the platers being made. It's a little bit wider, but then you have to deal with that filigree. So I like this one so much. You can really, really do super a lot with this. In fact, I'm just going to reach back and show you something. Here. Okay. I made this funny little ring from the ring shank. And you can see all I did was, um, with the cigar band style, I took and I glued the spell on here, and then after it was set, I just dangled something from there, and there you go. And how cute is that? Andrea said it was weird, though, but I like it, so I don't care what Andrea says. Here's what Andrea likes. And Lauren. I made these for them today, and they're so simple. In fact, I should make Lauren demonstrate for you how simple it is, but she refused. So, she's back there being a brat, but at least she's getting stuff on Etsy, right, Lauren? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, this is Andrea's ring, and this is Lauren's ring, and if, you might recognize these as being the fairy cameos from our website. We have it in the green, we have it in the black. Andrea liked the black, Lauren liked the green. All you do is glue the cameo into the 40 by 30 lace edge mount. We have plenty of them at the website. And then glue this signet ring black blank to the back. And so these belong to the girls. These are their rings. And uh, they like to wear them on their index finger because their fingers are really itty bitty tiny. I got big fat old lady fingers, but they got little skinny girl fingers. So I'm gonna put those back. Okay, here's some that I did too. Um, I writ I glued the signet ring blank to a cameo mount, which I turned upside down. This is an 18 by 13, so that I would have this pendant dangle here. So then that way I can take a jump ring and use my jumpy tool, and for this one I'm going to need the wide setting, open it, 
Did you ever see me use a jumpy tool? I'm going to do that again just in case you don't know about jumpy tools. This is how they work. I put them on my middle finger for leverage. I take the jump ring and it's got slits to fit your jumps. I need the fattest ring here because this is a thick ring. Stick it in there. Take your pliers and twist it open. You never pull out. You always twist sideways. Then I'm going to put this through here and then I'm going to take I think I might layer this one. So I'm going to put this heart and I'm going to put this heart that says I love you. I love you Mona Lisa. And twist close. And when you twist close you always want to get it real nice and flush so it appears to be seamless and will not pull open. That's another reason like I like why I like an oval or an, or a heavy jump ring because it doesn't tend to open. And there I've got one with a dangly thing on it. So if we can get it on there. Oh, don't you love my ring? Yes. That's so fun. So you can see how simple it is. There's nothing to it. Nothing at all. Now many like to use these jump rings. But as you can see, what happens is sometimes, sometimes, they plate darker on one side. And that is because when they go through the plating bath, they're like this. Why? I swear I don't know, but they are. <laughs> Excuse me. So what you might have to do is take a sunshine cloth, and you might want to buff that out, or take your nail buffer and buff it out a little bit. And you, all this is um, antiquing. And sometimes there can be a little blackening inside, too. So the way to deal with that is this product called Jewelry Shield. And honestly, if you're selling rings, it's a really good idea to paint the insides of your rings with this stuff. One or two coats. Light coats, let it dry 20 minutes in between. And the reason is, is some people have allergies. Um, the brass ox finish is not a precious metal finish. It's, it's brass finish. So people are allergic to brass. The, plate, the parts are brass based. Some people are allergic to, bra to brass and it can even go through plating. So if you put a coat or two of this on the inside, just paint it on. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do one. You just It looks like nail polish, right? And all you do is just paint it on the inside. Very lightly. Coat it. This is a brand new bottle. I don't know why it's kind of pulled apart like that. But it's working, so it doesn't matter. Okay, just coat it very lightly like that. That's it. And then maybe sit it like that and let it dry for 20 minutes or so. And you'll be good to go. Okay, I want to show you one more thing too. Here's some other rings that are in process. This is what I use sometimes to get my rings to dry properly because, you know, they're circular, circular and they may not want to set up well. So I just get a block of styrofoam and they make holes in it so I can stick them down in. Sometimes I put them face down. Now I'll have to clean that up because it's got a little styrofoam on it. When it's very dimensional like that, sometimes I'll put them face down. This one was on an old button. Sometimes I'll put them face up. This heart just came in. I used to have these in only vintage, but now they have uh, redone the dye and making them again. This one is very cool. It's a bug. This is the flat bottom beetle finding from our website. And I took and I put a 25 by 18 um, 50s plastic glitter cab in there. You can also make them from resin. And then I glued some leaves on and then a little flower with a pearl. And now, I got a bug ring. And this is not a new idea. I used to make these all the time when I did shows. In fact, I don't know, Robbie, if you go turn up just right here to this, this frog, you'll see. See, from the same finding, these pieces are like mm, 10, 12 years old. So I've been doing that a long time. And it's just kind of a common use of the product. It works out really nicely. I did some of the Mr. Feathery Owl, and I did a matching on um, the silverware. And now I'm going to put little Viva Flatbacks in his eyes, so that'll be cool too. 
But anyway, hopefully you can see this is super simple. You can make a lot of stuff fast. The first thing that I sold out of my new shop was a ring. And I think I'm going to sell a lot more. And I think you will too. And plus your friends will enjoy getting them from you as gifts. So um, if you want to come on over to bsuboutiques.com, we have... All the resin flowers and little 18 by 13 cameos and bezels and mounts and frames and and the these fairy cameos, all the jumpers, everything you need to make this stuff is right there at very good prices. And uh, we hope to see you soon.